un tiburón, un tiburón, nadando en el agua. In California, more than half of the children under eight years old are growing up in households and communities where they speak more than one language. These English language learners have the incredible ability to learn and develop both of their languages. Encontré un cognado. Posesión. Posesión, ¿y en inglés? Possession. ¿Y cómo se llaman esas palabras? ¿Cómo se llaman? Cognados. ¿Cómo se llaman? Cognados. One of the amazing things about being bilingual is that you don't have two separate brains. What you know in one language often applies to what you know in the next. ¿Con qué sonido empieza la palabra pingüino? When we create school environments and we create classrooms in which students are able to articulate and identify those cross-language connections, we're building upon the genius of the dual language brain. Así se dice. What this looks like in the classroom is that it can come in the form of strategies. So we can have cross-language strategies, such as Así se dice, where students are very intentionally looking at the two languages side by side and how they work similarly and how they work differently. She he has like a woman, a little lady, talks like a little lady. No, it's a señorita, so yeah, like a lady. Yeah, lady. Today, we saw two students as they were going through the translation, struggling and navigating the word señorita. What does that mean? Little woman, little lady. They were having a wonderful conversation, developing that metalinguistic awareness that both built upon their knowledge of Spanish as well as their knowledge of English. Me tomas el pelo. Let's just talk about that part. Why did you grab my hair? Oh, you put it in the form of a question. Okay. Did you pull my hair? Did you pull my hair? Listen to him use his expression just like if he were reading a book. Go ahead. I figured out that Chica, the, the first letter is, it's, is a capital letter. Excellent. Another student had one of those aha moments when it came to the name of the boy Chico, and he was realizing, oh, look, if this was a lowercase c, it would just mean boy. But here, because it's capitalized, it must be the name of someone. And why? Why is it a capital letter? Because the names? When we create environments where students are language detectives and we foster conversations where students are sharing with each other and then articulating that thinking, we provide a space where that metalinguistic awareness is shared and his aha can become a learning moment for all of the students. Y hay unas cosas que son iguales en español e inglés y unas cosas que son diferentes. Cross-language lessons are instructional times in the day that a teacher plans in which students are doing this metalinguistic analysis of how one language works and how another works. The weight, is it heavy, is it light? Um, so again, here's the noun. Can somebody put this adjective in its correct place, got in? Okay, so we'll see exactly where it goes. Okay, thank you, Karen. Can we read this, everyone? Why would? In this second grade classroom where the students were immersed in a matter unit, they were looking at description and using different kinds of adjectives to describe the materials that they were studying. So now, do you have a question, Diego? Okay, Diego, or comment? If it says wood brown, it's not going to make sense, but it's going to make sense if you say the wood is brown. In this cross-language lesson, she was looking at with them the difference in how we place adjectives in English and in Spanish. And one of the students had a wonderful moment where he realized, oh, the adjective in English goes before the noun unless you use is. And then you can say the wood is brown. It is brown wood. It is flat. Nuestro idioma. Nuestro idioma, uno, y vamos a hacer el puente, pase por el puente, puente, al idioma, dos, dos, caminen por el puente, y nos quedamos ahí o nos podemos devolver por ese puente.
Exacto, idioma 2 me puede ayudar, idioma 1, idioma 1, idioma 2. Muy bien. ¿Qué palabras que hay acá me ayudan a entender palabras de inglés? Si ya vimos cognados, ¿alguien encontró algo cognado? As students are looking at the similarities between languages, studying cognates can be a wonderful source of vocabulary development, both in Spanish and in English. In this teacher's dictado lesson, students were identifying cognates that they found, and the teacher is telling us about how important it is to build upon what we know in one language and how we use that in the next. Muéstraselo a la clase, por favor. Entonces, ¿qué dices? Tengo aquí... ¡Pizza! Muy bien. Y empieza con el sonido. In the kindergarten class today, the teacher was building on a lesson that the students had already had in Spanish literacy around the syllables in Spanish and the sounds that they make and was helping students make the connection to the fact that P makes the same sound in English. Penguins. 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 Yeah, that's what After the part of the lesson where the teacher was instructing on these sounds, the students were invited to take this work in to centers where they were going to be working with partners to hunt through the room, to hunt through their resources, and take ownership of the charts and put their own ideas on the charts. Los cognados son similares en el inglés y en español, pero en este caso, en esta lección, es algo que va a ser diferente y es importante aprender también las cosas que son diferentes en los dos idiomas. Eh, vamos a aprender de la posesión. ¿Puede decir posesión? Posesión. Posesión significa que algo es mío. Posesión. Los zapatos de David son fabulosos. Vamos a leerlos juntos. Los zapatos de David son fabulosos. ¿Ven el patrón? De, 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 de. Ahora vamos a hacer el puente. Vamos a hacer la conexión del español al inglés. Es un poquito diferente. When the teacher had done an oral language analysis, one of the students had said, the shovel of the paleontologists. Now, for a teacher who understands Spanish, you know this student is doing a brilliant thing. They're using the grammatically correct form of possessives in Spanish, only substituting in the English vocabulary. We call this an approximation instead of calling it an error. It's a student who's getting there. They're using what they know in one language and approximating it in the next. That is actually not, not how you would say it in English, but I really love the way that you're using what you know in Spanish to try to make sense of English. We can build on these strengths by acknowledging them, acknowledging the genius of them, and then teaching the correct way to say it in the other language. In English, we say Mrs. Lopez's with apostrophe S, key, is gold. This is how you say it in English correctly. The shoes of David are fabulous. I think you would say David's shoes are fabulous. One thing that I was noticing in your talking, in your writing, is that you're using that some things in English that may be possibly coming from Spanish. Some of you say, um, do you know this word? Para or para que. You, normally in Spanish you would use para or para que when you're giving a reason. I didn't really know this because I don't speak Spanish. I had to do some extra research. Okay? And so um, when we say it in English, we don't actually say for. Many of our English instructed classrooms in California are super diverse classrooms in which there are a multitude of home languages. It is equally important for teachers in those classrooms to be able to build on their students' cross-language connections as well. This looks like creating an environment in which students' home languages are recognized and celebrated, where students feel comfortable speaking in their home languages, and where teachers themselves are modeling that idea of being a language detective and trying to understand and learn. How is it similar in your language? Do you read right to left in the language that your parents speak, or is it different? articulating those similarities and differences that help students more deeply understand both their home language as well as English. In SEAL, we have immersive classrooms in which students are engaged in the thematic instruction. The walls, the room come to life as the students build it together. So today we had a chance to see some 
as the teacher called them, linguistic archaeologists. As a part of that, one of the center choices for students was to don their archaeologist gear, their hats and their vests, and grab their magnifying glasses and go on a hunt for words. When we create environments in which students are encouraged to look at those differences and similarities between their languages, we create a space that allows for these cross-language moments where students stop and go, oh, I see a cognate. And the role of the teacher is to stop, to acknowledge it, to celebrate that student's growing bilingualism and their ability to see those connections and to build off of those aha moments. Ariana earrings are gold and white. In SEAL, we want students to have mastery of all of their languages, to be able to use them both proficiently and to be able to move in and across them fluently. Someday, because I speak two languages, I will be able to help other people that don't speak Spanish. We want students to have the skills to read, write, to communicate, to change the world, and to have voice to articulate for themselves and for their communities. Because I speak English, I could talk to my brother and help translate for my mom at the doctors and say my mom needs medicine.